Hi folks, you are very welcome to this week's episode of Genos Live and it's one again where we have an absolutely great A guest for you uh, this week uh, in the form of Andreas von der Heet. And Andreas was um, previously the uh, head of talent acquisition and development in Amazon and uh, is also the author of Building a Coaching Culture. And when I was talking to Andreas before we started the session, I said to him, we find that uh, people are talking about three things right now, that our clients are asking us about three things right now, and that's emotional intelligence, psychological safety and effective teamwork and effective teaming. And he said there are a couple more that he's seeing, um, but all very much centered around getting people more uh, working more effectively together. So really excited to dive into that and to look at what Andreas research says about how you build an effective um, uh, coaching culture where you not only manage people for performance, but you manage them for development. So we're going to get the, into that in just a couple of minutes. We bring uh, Andreas in and get Get into that conversation. Before we do that, what about you? Uh, so why not tell us who are you, where are you, where are you joining us from today? And I, I invite this every week and sometimes you, you, you offer it. If there's something really great has happened for you this week or something really good uh, going on in your world that you're excited about, why not share it now? Put it into the chat because there's too little great news in the world right now. It's really lovely to see if you're brimming with excitement uh, over something that's going on in your world. Before we dive into the session proper today, uh, as ever, I'm going to give you two or three minutes of advertising on who uh, Genos are, and then we're into the, the session itself. So Genos International are around since the year 2000. We're an award-winning emotional intelligence organization. Our specialization is uh, providing uh, assessments and training that help people to show up to one another more effectively so that they get more from one another and more for one another. In that respect, we provide a series of uh, emotional intelligence assessments, uh, training and developments of programs on emotional intelligence, on psychological safety, on building the resilience to deal with challenging times like this. One of the things that we really love doing is uh, working with either in-house HR and OD people or independent coaches and consultants and trainers whom we certify to use our uh, assessments and use our programs and they get access to uh, basically the entire toolkit that we use with our clients. And I'm going to give you a little bit more uh, detail on that in a few moments. Um, our certified practitioner program is uh, accredited by the ICF for continuing education for ICF um, uh, accredited coaches. And here's the big brag. We are so proud, bottom left of the screen there, we're so proud to be one of trainingindustry.com's top 20 assessment companies over the last five years. And please God, uh, when it comes around this year, over the, uh, uh, for the next uh, six years. So for the last five years in a row, we've been one of the top assessment companies in the world. Now, one of the things that I say we love to do, and uh, we've done it about seven and a half thousand times worldwide, is to work with independent coaches, consultants, and trainers, or HR and OD uh, professionals, to provide them with a credential in emotional intelligence. Our program runs over uh, a six week period, six virtual sessions, and instead of uh, you listening to me talking about it, I'm gonna give you a 50 second piece of video, and then we're gonna dive into the session. And that uh, piece of video will tell you just what's involved in certifying with Janos. Here we go.
Okay, so um, next opportunity to join the program is coming up in June. And I say that to you because it's usually one of our biggest programs because people use the summer period to get their skills uh, up to speed. So um, if you want to add a credential uh, and a capability to be able to bring emotional intelligence solutions and development programs to your organization or to your clients, well then be sure to check out our certification page. Uh, if you're an ICF coach coming up during ICF, ICF Coaching Week, we always have a very special discount for ICF um, uh, certified coaches. And um, we also do early bird discounts on what is already a, a very well-priced program. So Ava is going to uh, pass you through the, uh, in the chat, she's gonna pass you through a link to the, the coaching page or to the certification page, or you can hold your camera over that QR code and you'll go through to it. Now, before we bring uh, Andreas in, let me just finally tell you who have we got next week. As you know, every week we have a, pretty much an all-star lineup, some really, really great speakers, and, and next week is no uh, uh, exception. We have one of Daniel Goldman's co-authors, the co-author on uh, emotional intelligence at workplace, Carrie Chernus, and he'll be here to talk to us about his research uh, on emotional intelligence, which is laid out in his uh, book, Leading with Feeling, where he gives nine specific tactics that you can immediately apply to start to have more impact as a leader applying emotional intelligence uh, techniques and, uh, and, and approaches with your people. So very, very uh, exciting session coming up next week. And of course, it's just adding, you've already seen some of them. Believe it or not, we're in week, uh, I think it's 14 this week. And we've seen some really fabulous guests. Well, we've just as many more fabulous guests coming over the next while. Now, um, before I bring in uh, Andreas, let me bring in Aoife and just ask Aoife, so tell me who have we got online and, and what are they telling us, if anything, is going on in their world? Oh. There we go, I'm, I'm the one muted this time. Ah, yeah. there you go. It's good to be back with you guys. Really looking forward to today's session. A lot of people have wrote into us saying they can't wait to hear from Andrea. So very excited to get started. Let's see who we have joining us today. Some familiar faces and some new Genos Live members from, let me see, South Africa. Um, this, this, this is a new one for me. I think it's in Macedonia, Skopje, S-K-O-P-J-E. Is that Okay, Macedonia, Macedonia yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, from Ireland, from Normandy, from Ireland again, and from Durban in South Africa and Melbourne in Australia. Um, Sue shared some news, which is lovely, but also, you know, through a difficult time. So as you know, Sue's in South Africa and she's really encouraged by the way her community have come together to help each other following the devastating floods, which they've experienced last week. And uh, she says, we are resilient and strong and it's so wonderful to see and be a part of. Hmm. Thank you for sharing, Sue. Great, thank you, Sue, and thank you to everyone for being here. Now, um, this is this is one of those topics that is very, very of the moment. So, what I say to you right now, and Aoife is going to um, be monitoring the, the chat line. If you have any questions, make sure to pop them into chat, good and early, so that Aoife can queue them up and we can serve them up to Andreas. Now, having spoken about Andreas and built it up, it's almost like a virtual drum roll. Uh, let's bring him in and welcome to him to the session. So, Andreas, it's it's great to have you here thanks thanks for taking the time yeah thank you very much for having me Derek and channels and Eva. i'm super excited and being here so a great pleasure and a great honor great thank thank you the honor really is is very much all ours we we're we're really looking forward to learning from you uh, Eva, would you like to do the usual kind of just do a, a formal introduction just give the folks some idea of andreas and where he's coming from and and so on it would be my pleasure um, so welcome, Andreas. Um, folks that haven't had the pleasure of hearing Andreas yet, he is a leader, coach, and a scholar. Uh, he's built an enviable leadership and people management experience in, in past roles. As Derek mentioned, as Vice President of Merchandising at Chewy at Amazon, where he led talent acquisition and development in Seattle. And before that, he was Director of Kindle Content and Country Manager and Managing Director of Amazon by VIP in Germany. He's also a, a very important part of our Genos community as a certified Genos EI practitioner. And in this episode, we are going to dive into his book, Building a Coaching Culture, which proposes an academically researched, developed and validated model of eight dimensions of successful coaching. 
So we will share a link to Andreas's book. I'm going to be here behind the scenes monitoring the chat. And I know we have a lot of coaches on with us this morning. So I'm sure they'll have plenty of questions for you. Thanks for being with us, Andreas. Great. So th thank, thank you, Wafa. And uh, I'll be able to see you on the background. So you just give me a wave as soon as we have questions and we'll, we'll bring them in to Andreas. So um, uh, thank you for that. And Andreas, uh, or I beg your pardon, Afa mentioned Andreas' book. And uh, I'm going to put it up on the screen just for a few seconds uh, or for a few minutes. And you can see there's a, a, a QR code there that you can uh, scan with your camera and uh, grab a copy of it. And it's actually extremely good value, Andreas, uh, on, uh, on Amazon. And I, I love being able to get books that are sub $10. So it's, it's fantastic it, and, and a lot of meat for that. So, yeah, sorry. No, I just wanted to stress the, the, the book is, of course, as we are coaches, we want to contribute. So we want to spread the good word about coaching. So mm. it's not a um, money making initiative. So that has always been my obsession and, and my big mission then to, to make my knowledge available and also the same uh, token from others. So I hope that we can kick off a good discussion today that we have great questions today but hopefully also some good follow-up questions after today's session great great and um so so just with that let's let's dive straight in in the book you talk about the times that we're going through uh over the last couple of years and you say taking a manager as as coach approach is absolutely apt and absolutely right for the times we live in why so yeah, I, I think there are different reasons currently. If you see the world, Derek, and we all know that uh, as uh, business people, as coaches, as father, as a son, as a brother, times are pretty challenging in the business world. I mean, the days where business was as usual, they've been over for a long time. So we've been living with disruption in technology, rapidly changing customer and consumer behaviors. However, in the last few years, we've seen really big, hairy, audacious challenges coming up. Yeah. Think about climate change. Think about nationalization tendencies in many countries, in big countries of the world. For us as Europeans, who would thought like a few months ago that we could have once again a war yeah. in the center, in the heartland, in Ukraine, in Europe? And, and, and that, I think, brings, makes us all aware of the, the massive challenges besides COVID-19, et cetera, et cetera. I've also seen, and, and myself being part of the system, but also then when I talk to clients and to other coaches, mm -hmm. that there, there is a lack uh, uh, of people who are willing, who are capable of stepping up. And that yeah. could be teams, but that could be also leaders. Mm -hmm. So people who, who resist to raise the voice, action to take over ownership. And and that that's nice because if you look at what was invested over the years in learning and development, alone in the US, when I did my research, I found out that in 2019, more than $80 billion were invested in learning wow. and development. At the same time, hmm. when you look at service, Gallup and all the others, when they measure the effectiveness of learning and development and what employees think about it it's the number one frustration area of employees that they are not happy with learning and development so that's a paradox you have all these massive investments you have big challenges going on but still employees and managers feel they are not ready and last but not least derek to answer your question why i think times are changing and then the big challenges when we think about millennials so everyone born between hmm. 1981 and 1996, or even now Gen Generation Z coming to the workforce. So in 2025, three quarter of the workforce will be millennials or Gen Z. So wow. almost three out of four will be uh, millennials. And they are very clear about that they want to have a tailor-made training approach that hmm. they value that they want to have a personal development plan. So therefore, organization and leaders need to be ready. 
Okay. So, so just just before we dive into what your manager as coach as an approach uh, is and and how that works, let me just d- t- pick up on one of the points you mentioned there about people uh, not stepping up as leaders and maybe even teams just not stepping up. Do do you think that's because people are afraid, or is it because they just don't know what to do, or why why do you think people are failing to kind of step up and 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 take the lead in these difficult times? Yeah, it's a great question. And I think as often in life, Derek, it's a mix. It it even starts with the the, the traditional managerial approach, which is still very dominant in in organizations like this. Hey, we we have a strategy in place. We expect you to do that. And of course, get involved, raise your voice. Still, we have performance goals we want to achieve. So it's not really lift from the top. And it hmm. has to start from the top by role modeling. Leaders have to role model a coaching culture. And and then you have also managers who understood and said, yeah, I get it. It's hmm. not the old command and order event managerial style, but tell me how to do it. I don't yeah. know how to do it. And if I don't know how to do it, I'd rather stay on the safe side on what I know before taking any risks and potentially missing my targets, which I still have to deliver because my executive team still tells me you have to deliver. Mm. Yeah. So, so, so let's segue into this manager as coach approach. And, and I think you used the shorthand and maybe I just made up this shorthand, but I think you used the shorthand as MAC kind of Mac, uh, manager as coach, uh, approach, but, but mm-hmm. so, so, Talk to me a little bit about how you would contrast um, the manager as coach approach with the the, the classic um, the classic approach to management. What does it look like to approach management or leadership as a coach? Yeah, I, I would even say, uh, Derek, that it is not a, a contradiction of management or traditional traditional management. I rather see it as a, a, a complementary managerial okay. approach, a leadership approach. So it's the next step to help an organization to transition an organization into the future. And why is it important? Hmm. Whenever we go and when we ask leaders or as a manager, say, when, when I go into companies and when I ask one of my first questions is of managers saying, hey, how do you coach your teams? Are you a coach? And, and they, of course, would say, of course, I'm a coach. And, and then my next question would be, so how do you coach the team? And, hmm. and they say, oh, look, I, I spend time together. I'm here for them. I tell them what to do. And if they struggle, then, then I support them. And, and we work through it. And they need me. They need me at their side. Hmm. And they know they can rely on me. So it's, it's realistic if they already have this attitude. But, but it's not the true sense of coaching, isn't it? But you also can't blame them because there are so many different definitions about coaching, yeah. the standard approach to coaching. They don't know that good coaching is, don't tell them necessarily what to do, help them to find their own solution, help them to facilitate the pro- process, be a good sparring partner, mm. help them to unleash their innate potential, and they're going to figure it out so they don't know that. They, for them, if you talk to 80, 90 percent of managers, they say, look, as a manager, I, I, I mentor them. I, I tell them uh, at the end of the day what to do, not in a directive way, but I still help them that they uh, really figure it out, but really quickly because we have to hit our targets. Hmm. So there is this disconnect. Therefore, it's an extension of the traditional approach that the manager as a coach approach. Hmm. And and so so let's say let's say I'm working for you and and you have um, you are an accomplished manager as a coach and it's routinely the way you go about managing myself and my team members. What's the experience for me like? So so tell me say you're interacting with me. Let's say let's say for example um, classic uh, leader or manager intervention. I'm not meeting my targets, or I'm I'm not living up to the expectations that have been set for me. Uh, what's what's the kind of manager as coach uh, approach to that, and uh, how does that work? Oh, 
I think we seem to have lost uh, Andreas there for a moment, but uh, I dare say there he is. I was about to say, I dare say he's dialing back in. Hi, Andreas. When yeah. did I lose you? Yeah, sorry. I think we have a little bit an unstable uh, connection. Maybe if you just could reframe or repeat sure. your question, that would be great, Derek. Yeah, so, so what I was saying was, uh, let's say I work for you. And let's say you are somebody who lives this approach of being a manager as a coach. And um, let's say, for example, that I'm failing to meet my targets or I'm not living up to expectations. How do you, what's the approach that a manager as a coach takes with me in that situation? Because classic uh, manager approach is, is very directive and, and very at best mentory but very, very much um, uh, directive. What's the difference? What's the experience for me like? Um, why, uh, what comes out of that? Yeah, maybe before answering that question, let, let's maybe re-clarify managing as coaching yeah. because yeah. I think that there's a lot of confusion around that. There, there are different levels. The way at least I, I see it and, and my proposed approach for organizations, Derek, and then I'm going to answer your question more directly. Great. There, there is more foundational level of the manager as a coach, which I call as a level one, mm. which, which is a manager who is committed to coaching and who understood, look, it's an essential leadership, leadership style. Mm. And this manager understands the foundations of coaching. Mm. They received some in-house training that they understand, okay, what's the definition of coaching? What are the most relevant techniques? Mm. So how do I frame a coaching process? How do I structure it? And they know how to ask some good key questions. Yeah. And so th that is this level one versus telling their employees what to do. They first want to hear from them their proposals. They want to hold them accountable by them having taken over ownership. Yeah. And they incorporate that in their daily work. So that's the foundational level. Then you have organizations who say, look, yeah, that's great. And, and I want to do that with my managers, but I want to have coaching. I want to use that more as a competitive advantage. And they move on to what I call then an advanced level. Yeah. So they get closer now to the pure sense of coaching. So they have managers, they have more advanced in-house trainings, and these mm. managers are already very comfortable with coaching techniques. They would coach teams, but they would also be available to help other teams, other managers to coach their teams for specific situations. Uh, with, with being available during working hours to work with other employees, and, and they often have also already received external coaching. They mm. might have some official coaching certifications. That is the advanced level. And then you have a few companies, and I would say that's around, based on my research, between 5 and 8% of organizations, they have managing as coaching as on an expert level. It's the highest level mm. where they have a community of experienced in-house managers, but at the same time, experienced coaches right. who coach on a regular basis with very sound, with very comprehensive coaching programs. They would mm. offer regular jobs for young managers to scale in-house coaching across the organization. They would have peer coaching groups. They would have a coaching community, an in-house mm. coaching community. And that can be often, that is often driven out from line managers, but sometimes you have also companies then who integrate it within their HR department and give it a more structured approach. Right. So, so I just wanted to clarify that before answering your question, that it's really clear, Derek, when we talk, there is not one approach to, to a Mac approach, mm. like a manager as a coach is. There are different sophistication, there are different maturity levels. And I have to clarify that very often when I talk sure. to companies, to organizations, when they say, could you consult us, please, on an in-house coaching program, then it's mm. first finding out where do you stand because it makes no sense to come with a full-blown rollout program if you have to get the basics right first.
Okay, and so, so it sounds like, and that's interesting because one of the questions I was going to ask you, does that mean that you're advocating that, that all managers need to become basically qualified executive coaches in the future? But, but it sounds like you're saying to me that at that level one, that organizations and individual uh, leaders can get benefits simply from, from learning the basics of being able to have, if I want to call it, they say, uh, a coaching conversation. Would that be a correct interpretation of what you're saying? Yes, absolutely. And, and the, the, the point you touch on is a very relevant one. A manager as a coach, it doesn't mean that everyone, every manager should become what you just mentioned, like a qualified executive yeah. Yeah. coach. I mean, what, what's a qualified executive coach would be the first question. Is qualification to, to be a manager who's coaching successfully in-house, hmm. you don't need to have a coaching certificate. You don't need to be accredited by the ICF. Of course, it doesn't hurt, Absolutely. but it's not necessary. Mm. Rather, qualified means that, that you're committed to develop and lead your employees like in, in a really like in a participatory manner yeah, with okay. the right skills to realize uh, joint targets. And, and finally, Derek, also something you, you've mentioned is very interesting, and, and that's the big mission. I'm out there to, to make coaching accessible to to move away from the stigma coaching is only for executives yeah. coaching is only for an elite that is not a manager as a coach is a very democratic approach it means providing coaching to all employees in a structured mm. in a systematic and in a scalable manner okay Okay, so so just and, and and I'm going slightly off, and we'll come back to the the original question there from a few moments ago. But I'm just curious, what what does what does you know what's involved say in taking somebody who has no idea of a coaching approach, and they just you say to them, manager is coach, and they say, oh, not sure exactly what you mean by that. What's involved in getting somebody to level one? What are the sorts of things that they learn, and how long does that take? Yeah, so, so it, it's if if an organization says, look, I, I want to work on it. So you first have to explain it, of course, to your organization and to your managers and, and not to upset them to, to explain that it's a complementary approach to coaching. Hmm. You, you have to find your own way how you define coaching in-house. So you should resist to take a textbook definition of coaching. Okay. You should rather say, understand the core essence what coaching is and how does it fit into mm. your corporate setting and how can you make your managers feel at peace that they understand it helps them to realize their targets versus distracting them yeah. the biggest angst <clears throat> of any manager is to to get in a territory they don't feel comfortable any longer and that builds as we all know that builds resistance yeah. so making sure that they understand that there's not only a good intention, but they understand it's a successful way and it's about sharing best practices. It's about sharing with them data and insights, how effective coaching is, but it's also making them aware of what you do as an organization mm. to help them to succeed mm. and that they are not left alone. So this psychological reassurance we are in with you together, not only because it's trendy, it's fashionable, sure. but we have a clear approach. We have a program worked out together with you and we listen also to you and come forward with your own ideas because we come with a learner mindset mm. to implement coaching together with you and get a joint success. That is very, very important. Okay. Okay. So, so what are the basics I need to know to become effective coaching as a manager? If I if I just want to start, you know, uh, uh, having more of those um, uh, coaching style conversations and taking a more manager as coach, what what are the basic skills that I I really need to learn? Uh, sorry, Derek. We were phasing in and out again. My apologies. Yeah, there's a little click on the line there occasionally. Just wondering, you know, what are what are the basic skills? Let's say I'm starting, and I I have no intuitive idea of what it means to be, you know, to take a a, a manager as coaching approach. What are the basic skills that I need to learn to to really start to get going and uh, taking that approach with the people that I work with? 
Yeah, and, 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 and that is uh, what uh, very much in my reason to talk to people. Let's maybe take it from the coachy perspective. What do yeah. they expect from a high quality coach as a business coach? There is, of course, like with a life coach, but you, you would expect a significant depth of life experience. Mm. And in, on top for a business coach, it's of course, it's all about that they understand the company, that they understand the culture, that they mm. understand the processes and the industry, the environment, mm. and that they have an approach that a coach feels comfortable, mm. that they have a, a credibility coming not only from life experience, but also from a business understanding, from a business experience. Okay. On top to that, there, there's very much, of course, personal characteristics. So the coaches, when I interviewed, when I speak in, in the business world, in different organizations, saying, what's the perfect coach look like for you? What are successful coaches mm. you worked with in the past? then you hear very much about eye level discussions okay that moving away from this old mentoring i don't want to have this manager who's been around for 30 40 years who knows everything better yeah who comes all with their recommendations i want to have someone who asks me questions who listens to me but also someone who challenges me so coaches want to be challenged they okay. want to have their mirror they, they want to have a critical companion and a critical facilitator. And, and to be able to do that as a coach, now to flip it around, of course, you, you need to be able to hold back yourself with giving recommendations. Hmm. You need to know that you should ask good open-ended questions. You, you need to know that you should challenge and not uh, um, accept the first best answer but to follow up with follow up follow up you should you should know how to go through a structured coaching approach and you should also know then at the end when you had a session and that could be an informal lunch conversation yeah as a manager as a coach over lunch where you meet a coachee and then also understand what's now the ownership what's the action of how do they want to move on versus mm. waiting for you as a manager telling them what to do what is it they tell you what they are going to do mm. so so it sounds like and I, I i thought that was very interesting what you said this could be a casual conversation over lunch it sounds like this is this is almost more and i use a small p more of a philosophy of an approach than than necessarily uh, let's sit down and have a coaching session. It's really in the the mindset or the philosophy of the leader that they will have these open development um, uh, conversations. Or am I am I picking up that that are incorrectly? I, I I would say in general you pick it up correctly, Derek. Yeah. But I would also then say yes and no. And okay. it has to do again with the different <laughs> levels of managers, coaches. Yeah, mm. you, you could have the foundational level where you say, look, my managers have these foundational leadership skills. And mm. let, let me have an example. For you. Say there is, let, let's call him Adam. Adam is a coachee and he has issues with one of his senior peers. Okay. Someone in his team, let's call her, let's call her Amanda. And Amanda is, is a team member who's very dismissive of Adam, but also of other team members. Hmm. And obviously, Adam struggles with that. He's approaching Sarah, the manager of Adam, and, and he explains it. And they say, look, let, let's go for lunch. Adam, tell me more about it. I, I'd like to hear more your situation. I'd like to understand what does that mean to you? How, how, how is the relationship here for you with Sarah? And so she's asking then Adam thoughtful questions to yeah. understand his situation. Mm. And then she is moving over during the lunch, lunch conversation says, look, Adam, how would the situation, if it were resolved with, Sarah, uh, with, with uh, uh, um, Amanda, the situation, Adam, how would the situation look like? What's yeah. your plan? What are your ideas to get there? Yeah. So what are you going to do with Sarah to make that a better relationship? And tell me exactly your one or two actions. And then let's have a check in lunch in three or four weeks time. Let's talk about mm. it again. So that's the informal approach. But you also could imagine that you have it on a Mac level too, where you always already have more experienced managers acting as a coach. Mm. And, and let's, let, let's say, uh, again, you have a situation, you have one manager approaching another manager. 
Let, let's say you, you have a manager, John. Yeah. John is a manager. He had a performance review conversation with Mary. Mary being a senior product manager in John's team. And uh, they had a good performance. Mary is a high performer. Mary wanted to get a promotion out of mm. the performance review. John thinks she's not ready for it yet. And, mm. and he explained it why. And he had some good reasons. And because he's also very supportive of her and he wants Mary to succeed. But still, Mary is disappointed. She reflects on the review comes back to John a few days later and says, look, John, to be very honest, because we have a good relationship, you know, I'm very disappointed. I think I'm going to resign. There are so many opportunities out there in the market space. I just think I don't have this opportunity to make fast enough a career here at our organization. So John, of course, being, being very shocked, he doesn't want to so he, he's going then to Joanna, to one of his peers, who is a very experienced leader and coach, and says, look, Joanna, that's the situation with Mary. I don't want to lose her. Would you mind talking to her if she is ready to talk to you? So I can ask Mary if she would talk to you. Could you go a little bit deeper as a neutral person, as an hmm. outside ex internal coach and talk through her that we understand where she is, how quickly she would like to move on. Could you help her to understand what she still has to learn and that yeah. we are so serious about keeping her and to develop a plan together with her? So all of them could meet and then it would be a more formal coaching session because okay. they could say, look, Mary, le le let's meet in the morning for breakfast meeting or let's meet offside. Very often I see this type of managers as coaches, they would take the coachy offside on neutral territory to, to sit, to understand them, to work through a plan, and then suddenly you would have almost like a series of coaching engagements over time. Mm. Okay, and, and just, just listening to and that's really interesting. Those examples are very illuminating. As I'm listening to it, and I was taking notes and I was trying to see what are the elements that, that turn uh, a manager from uh, a manager taking conventional approaches to a manager you know, acting as a coach. And one of them is certainly his mindset. They, it seems that they, they want to go there. You mentioned particularly having good questions and, and having these open questions and then listening and resisting the um the temptation to go back to the familiar which is the directive but right through through several things that you said like the conversation over lunch there um uh, it sounded like in the background there there was some kind of a coaching model like grow or one of those going on where you've you're where they're following a structured approach to kind of what do you want to come out of this where are you at right now what are the options uh, how does what what are your recommendations in that regard what do do should managers have a coaching model like grow or some such at their disposal it is there certainly should be if you want to have managing as coaching as a more structured approach you yeah. need to have a uh, defined in-house coaching approach yeah that, that could be centered around the crow model that could be more centered around also nlp techniques of coaching that could be a very systematic like if you think about a stakeholder centered coaching approach of marshall goldsmith mm. where you say can we also include certain stakeholders there is no right or wrong. Okay. It depends on the culture, on the maturity, but mm. certainly you should have an approach and you should train and coach your in-house managers to, to apply one standard approach. That is one thing which is very important, mm. Derek, and your question also raises confidentiality. Yes. Your question also raises aspects of how do I help a manager as an in-house coach, not to confuse the different hats they mm. carry mm. as a leader, as a manager. So any good in-house coaching programs also clarify these roles. They have a clear rule about confidentiality. And, and mm. the key confidentiality rule, of course, is if you want to make in-house coaching fly, is absolute confidentiality. Of course. So there is no sharing of information with outside partners, mm. even not with HR. Yeah. There, there, there might be certain rules that you say, look, you only share consolidated information 
and send that information to further evolve the process. Mm -hmm. But the key thing is really to help. And, and that's where managers very often resist to become a coach because they are afraid that they are perceived by their team members suddenly as a coach um, versus their leader who has the yeah. right also to challenge them. And yeah. you mentioned something at the beginning, psychological safety, hmm. which, which is a super interesting element and super in-house coaches because what we know about high performing organizations is of course that the soil where it can flourish on mm. is psychological safety sure and and you, you need to role model that as a leader with a coaching approach mm. however it also doesn't mean that you need to what i call you don't have to go under in politeness Right. in being too nice with each other. Yeah. And that's where then managers are afraid if they put on their coach head that they are not yeah. able any longer to be decisive, to be challenging and to be demanding. Yeah. So that has to be addressed and that has to be clarified. Okay, and that's and that's I I think you've tapped into something that really really is in the psyche of people who are traditional uh, uh, take a traditional approach to leadership. That fear that I'm going to diminish my authority, diminish my ability to be able to call the shots when I need to. So let's let's park that for one second. I'm going to bring uh, Afa back in there for a moment and ask her, hey, what questions are we getting into the chat or, or uh, what comments are coming up that uh, Andreas might want to address? So folks, this would be a good time um, to pop in any questions that you'd like Andreas to, ad to address for us. Thanks, guys. Yeah, we have a question from uh, Dr. Katarina. Um, Andreas, how do you think a manager coaching approach will help them to achieve their business goals in today's challenging times? Yeah, yeah. So, so that, that, that's a great question. Is it meant from a coach perspective? Is it meant from the coachee or is it for both of them? Was there some clarification in that in the question, Eva? There wasn't, but I, I'm going to assume it, it, the managers or the leaders. Um, but maybe Katarina, if you wouldn't mind clarifying in the chat, that would be very helpful for us. I, I would imagine I would imagine that Katerina and uh, hi Katerina I didn't realize you were on the call um, I would imagine Katerina's coming from the perspective of the client you know so um, how is you know in in kind of pitching that into her clients how is this going to help yes. me to improve my results tell me tell yeah. me how am I going to how am I going to yeah. sell it basically yeah yeah. So, so that's very much then, and if we talk about the in-house clients, is of course the manager. And it needs, when you as an organization, when you want to launch an in-house coaching program, it's of course thinking from your audience, thinking mm. from your target group, what's in for them as a manager. So all managers, they're, they're, they have three, four key goals, of course. They're mm. the organizational goals, they're the team goals, and they have their personal development goals. So, so to position your coach, or don't be short-sighted just to say, look, that's something that helps the organization. Mm. It is something the manager, it helps you to build a stronger, a more advanced, a more engaged team, which then also will help you to step to the next level. And there are studies, which I often share them, best cases, also some data. There, there's quite some research about the effectiveness of in-house coaching. Mm. And there's also case studies, comparison companies of companies, similar companies in a setting where you applied the approach, the results, quantifiable uh, results, but also then companies who did not apply it. I, I just also to manage expectations, when I pitch it internally to organizations and to manage it, look, we can talk about ROI. We, we can show, we, we can measure performance of teams being coached versus teams not being coached. Mm. And, and there are certain criteria. You, you even can go, if you do it over six and 12 months, you can look at the top line, you can look at profit, but much, much more relevant is employee engagement measurements. Mm. So service with your team where you ask them like, psychological safety for example so how is the discussion culture within your team 
Are your ideas being considered when you bring forward an idea? Do you feel comfortable bringing forward an idea? How is it, how does your manager react if, if you have a, a contradictory proposal? So you can measure that at the beginning before Introaching as a cultural approach in the organization, and you can manage it, uh, and you can measure it afterwards. Mm -hmm. So there is data available. I, I share about projects I've done, and these are always eye openers for managers when they see. Well, it not only helps my organization, but it helps me. It makes my management easier, mm -hmm. and and I get a more engaged team, and I contribute to the well-being. That that's another very important. Element. Managers often feel, and they know it, if their teams are stressed out and overworked, they just don't know how to get out of that yeah. cycle. So when they see the numbers, when you come with a proposal, how to do it, and you, you need to have, that's another thing, you need to have senior management engaged when you pitch that to teachers. Hmm. It, it, they, they need to see, oh, look at that, John, Anna, Susan, all executive team members, they are also involved. And guess what? They even take part in the trainings. They are in the work. a very serious thing. I can feel safe. If they hmm. buy in, I also can buy in. And I have here a team of in-house people who help me, who explain to me how to do it. So, so that reduces the entry barrier and that gives them safety. Uh, if they feel it, it's the top is bought in, they understand the benefit and they have someone, partners help them to, to learn how coaching is and they can always go back and they have mentors helping them to, to, to grow into becoming like a coach as a manager. So these are probably the three key elements, I would say. Great, thank, thank you. Uh, Eva, have we another question there for Andres? We do. So Brian is asking, how can school managers use coaching in their management? Oh. Yeah, but interesting. So in, in my research, in my doctoral studies at Eastern University, in, in, in my track, we, we talk very much leadership in a business environment we talked very much about in a non-profit environment and in education and and there are of course some guidelines there are certain politics there are more layers in it however prime at the end of the day it comes back to the same three things i've just explained it's it's about that senior leadership your super intelligence your your school board it explained to them you, you need to form this joint alliance that they support. You need to have the sponsorship team. It's exactly the same you need to have established here. Mm. Then you need to explain all the teachers what's in for them. So how does it work, a coaching approach? What are the benefits? You again have to share data with them. Yeah. You have to share best practices with them. It's exactly the same approach. And then you need to have a project team. You need to have some experts. You need to start with a pilot. Take a pilot school, take maybe in your school, like an organization, a faculty, and say, look, we, we don't start to roll it out across the whole school, but we start here in a faculty, maybe the all the English teachers, teachers, people who are passionate about it, who have an interest about it, who have some already some basic knowledge, bring them together, form this knowledge pot set up a pilot with the support with the sponsorship team and roll it out in small steps so you don't need to have that's another misconception when we talk about a coaching organization people think oh wow the whole organization suddenly everyone is a coach sure no it's a journey you have to start right thank you Andre. Right. Thank do you, you have a couple of follow-on questions, Derek, or do you have time? Let's 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 take one more because what I want to really want to do before we finish up is I want to touch uh, get Andreas to touch upon uh, the model that he developed from his research that's explored in the book for uh, creating that coaching culture. But let's let's take one more quick one. Perfect. Uh, let me see. Quick one. There's a couple of big hairy questions here too. <laughs> um, so so kind of a follow-on for Katarina and. Um, Will coaching help the leaders to upskill their team 
apart from looking at engagement, um, she's asking, what about upskilling the team? Absolutely, absolutely. And it here it depends. Maybe you have to um, very much on the context and, and the approach of coaching. Do you use coaching predominantly to upscale skills? And so do you use it more as a skills coaching, which comes then close to training and having managers help like communication skills, conflict mm -hmm. management skills, uh, presentation skills. So you can apply here a coaching approach. For example, I've developed like a communication program for, for one of my clients about three months ago, where they said, we want to have a more open communication culture. I want to have my team members to disagree and to commit. How do I help my managers to transport that attitude, these skills, to their managers, to their teams. So that was very much skill focus. You can also use coaching to improve performance. Yeah, so like, how do I set up a performance management system in my company and how do my managers coach then that team? Like moving away from these old, once in a year I do an annual performance review and then I don't talk about it any longer mm -hmm. until in January, February it comes up and I surprise the whole organization. So how do I do ongoing performance management in a very collaborative manner, in a very much coach-minded manner? So therefore you can use coaching and then you can use coaching also classic how we use for behavioral change. Mm -hmm. And so where it really goes to, into the nuts and bolts of coaching, which is then certainly the highest level. So how can I build with coaching an open-minded culture that my team, what I mentioned at the beginning, become necessarily a high performing uh, team, but a high learning organization that my team members feel so safe that they commit mistakes, that they learn out of mistakes, that they don't feel embarrassed by a mistake, that they learn and that I can innovate. Mm. And, and that is like the gold standard then of in-house coaches and coaching where you start, you, you start maybe with skills. So you, you, you the trust people see, hey, coaching is working. Mm. You move on to performance <clears throat> coaching in a modern way, and then you go into behavioral coaching. Great. Thank, thank you for that, Andreas. And thank you for that, Aoife. Um, uh, I really want to get Andreas just to talk a little bit about uh, the model for, for creating a, a coaching culture in the last few minutes. So thank you. Thank you for those questions, folks. Thank you for that time, uh, Aoife. I'm going to pop the book back up onto the screen because I know many of you are going to have questions after this, many of which are answered in the book. And, uh, and I know Andreas has a, expressed a willingness to continue the dialogue afterwards. So uh, just because we finish off in about five or six minutes doesn't mean the dialogue has to stop because this uh, whole stream of chat remains live uh, afterwards and keeps going. So thank you, Aoife. Um, let, me, let me, as a, as a last, um, yeah, last gasp, um, uh, Andreas, just ask you in a, a kind of a three or four minute way to give you a sense of the the step by step. And I think it was an eight step model that you developed. So it's an awful lot of steps to get in a couple of minutes. But uh, somebody wants to create a coaching culture. What's the general approach and structure that they need to take? Yeah, I, I would recommend Derek here. It, it's about six main steps. Okay. And there are, of course, some sub steps, but for the simplification and focus yeah. of our discussion here. So, the very first step where you need to align internally, you need to have a joint agreement on the need and the definition of coaching. Yeah. Uh, especially because it's so fragmented. Different people understand different things about coaching. Mm. So you need to bring the key stakeholders together and say, okay, what is it? How do we define coaching? What's our objective? Why do we think we need coaching? And how does it fit with our mission, with our targets and our company culture? Mm. Yeah, so t take the key ingredients of coaching, but modify it to your needs. That's number one. And number two, you need to be super specific about expectations and objectives. What is it you can realize? What is it you can't realize? Because you might not have the know. You might have still managers. You have to explain it where you have a lower maturity. Mm. So be realistic in your expectations and start 
in the right department of your organization. And the right department is where you might have knowledge, where you have believers, or where you also have very, very people, but who are skeptical. So right. also involve the skeptics from the very beginning and give them responsibility. Uh, a third step besides the company senior leader sponsorship is project ownership. It's very often underestimated when I talk to organizations, they think, okay, I do a few training workshops and then I have a coaching culture. No, mm. you need to have a dedicated project ownership. You need to have people who look after it, who manage it, who understand the business and who are very passionate about coaching. So that's the third step. As a fourth step, you, you need to define the process and operational parameters. So one very easy thing is about how do my in-house stakeholders collaborate who are engaged in coaching? How do I ensure what I mentioned before, confidentiality? Hmm. And so these are the four steps. And then only then you start building out the coaching program. And right. the coaching program is, of course, about adult learning. It's about finding the right mix between classroom, online, self-paced. It's about uh, the, the learning ownership relationship between coach and coachee. And also differentiate, do I want to coach the skills performance or developmental coaching, behavioral coaching? Mm -hmm. And last but not least, always focus on learning transfer. So how do I bring it back into the workplace? How, how do I have then managers what they learned apply it, measure it, talk about it, and further develop it. So these are the six main steps in a very simplified manner, Derek. Wow, Andreas, honestly, when I said it to you, you know, um, we got three or four minutes, I, I thought, ah, oh, God, it's so unfair to the guy. That absolutely <laughs> nailed it, boom, boom, boom. And I think it's, it's just an indication of just how close you are to this content. And folks, let me tell you that Andreas' response is really just scratching the surface because um, the whole uh, methodology and approach that he recommends is is entirely research based and that research is laid out in uh, quite some detail in the book so if this is a topic that you're looking at for clients or for yourself make sure you grab a hold of the book you can do that obviously with the the link that Afa put in earlier on or you can uh, uh, scan the QR code um, look I want to thank you very very much Andreas and uh, really really appreciate it it's it's like it, it, these these conversations, sometimes they go by in a heartbeat. And it seems like no time that I was looking. I was saying, we got 55 minutes to chat. Great. And suddenly, boom, uh, it's just gone. I think we could go for an awful lot longer. But uh, I just say to the folks who are on the chat there, if you have questions they haven't been answered, just pop them in there because Andreas is is very active LinkedIn person. And I know uh, he'll engage with those questions and that dialogue as we go on. So I, I hope, uh, Andreas, if you're not under pressure, that you might be able to stay around in the background just for one or two minutes so we can we can thank you properly. But let me publicly in front of everybody say thank you, thank you really for a, a great session. Really, really appreciate it. And folks here again. I, I I think I think the pleasure was all ours, but uh, the delighted with the 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 uh, the content and the reaction that people had to it. So so thank you, and we'll see you in a couple of moments. So let me just go back, and and again just say to you, um, there is detail of Andreas' book uh, in the background. There's also a link in your chat so that you can grab a hold of it. So um, if this is a topic that's uh, one that's really uh, topical for you right now, uh, that, that would be an ideal purchase right this second. Let me tell you one more time that we uh, have Carrie Chernus here last week, or <laughs> last week, we have Carrie Chernus here next week. And Carrie was the co-author of Daniel Goleman on uh, emotional intelligence in the workplace. And he's going to be talking about his own book, which again, like Andreas's book, is very deeply based upon research and uh, uh, upon dialogues with emotionally intelligent leaders. And, and he lays out some really useful tactics and strategies that you'll be able to immediately begin to apply 
after uh, next week's session. So we've already dealt with the questions. So again, let me uh, just thank Andreas. Um, and it's a lovely way to thank him by standing in front of his picture. My sincere apologies, Andreas. Wrong picture up there. I meant to put the, the, the one over the one side. Folks, we will see you here next week. Um, uh, next week is going to be an afternoon session because our guest is based on the East Coast of the United States. So until then, I wish you all the very best don't forget engage with Andreas and ourselves on the uh, on the chat underneath uh, today's session have a really good week and we'll see you very very soon take care